Today's message comes from Matthew 26, 1 through 16. Uh, when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the feast, lest there, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now, when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, why, why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly, I say to you, whoever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And he paid him 30 pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Martin F-35 is a U.S. military aircraft by the Air Force. It has a stealth capability, which means stealth means, you know, it can come and attack the enemy quietly and suddenly that the enemy cannot detect that is coming, where it's coming from, when it's coming. And the U.S. have the F-35 with the stealth capability. Not too long ago, China came up with this JY-27. It's a radar. It's a radar system that they boastfully claim that it can detect stealth aircraft. So we can defend ourselves with that. And they sold the JY-27 to Syria with high price. And Israel also bought F-35 from the U.S. And early last year, January 2019, Israel and Syria had a conflict. And Israel's F-35 went and destroyed JY-27 in Syria. They both claim that we can detect all the aircraft with stealth capability. We can protect ourselves, but nah. It got utterly and completely got destroyed. In this story, some of the chief priests and elders of Jews gathered and plotted against Jesus to arrest him and to kill him. And the text says this, verse 4. They plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. Let's keep it quiet. Let's talk about this. Let's plan how we're going to attack him, arrest him, and kill him. This is our plan. Suddenly, quietly, then no one will come. Us coming and doing this. Let's do it. Was Jesus suffered and crucified and died because he did not see this coming? Was he completely unaware of their plan, their plot, that where they're coming from, when, what they're going to do? Is that why the suffering and torture and death happened to him? And Matthew tells us, no. Actually, this is how Matthew begins this text, this passage here. Let's look at verse 1 again. Verse 1 and 2. When Jesus has finished all these things, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. He knew exactly when he's going to die in two days. How he's going to die, I'll be delivered to be crucified. Which means when they came to arrest him and to torture and kill him, it did not catch him as a surprise. Even though they said, and by stealth, let's do this. 
Jesus completely. It was not, oh, I didn't know this was coming. No, it's just, I know this was coming. I know where you're coming from. What are you going to do? Then our question is this. Why did he run away? Or why did he didn't do anything to try to prevent this? Avoid such suffering or death if you knew it beforehand. Because if you knew that somebody's planning to kidnap you and they're going to torture you and eventually they're going to kill you, you will not let that happen to you. So, why then Jesus, knowing all that, let that happen to him? Now that, we heard it before in Matthew 16. We read this passage before verse 21. It says, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes to be killed and on the third day be raised. So what we see in our text, it was not the first time that Jesus foretold about his suffering and death. Actually, that was the fourth time that Jesus talked about it. To his disciple. And here, Matthew 20, 16, verse 20, was like, I must go to Jerusalem. I must go to Jerusalem. For what? So that he may suffer, so that he may die by the hands of these elders and chief priests. He talked about it even way before they, let's do this. This was not just a foretelling of what will happen in the future, this was the plan. Don't you see that? That's why Jesus says, I must go. Because this is a plan. I gotta go. He did not walk away from Jerusalem. He went into Jerusalem. I gotta go there. So Matthew presents, here in our text, three group of people who fulfill the plan of God without them being aware of that. Three groups of people who fulfill the plan of God without these people not aware that they are doing so. If you read the book of Matthew, um, Matthew actually arranged his material story according to thematically, not according to chronologically. Meaning, he arranged the sermons of Jesus from chapter 5, 6, and 7 together. He arranged the miracles work of Jesus together, the how he healed people. He did many miracles things. And he arranged all the parables of Jesus together. He arranged the Jesus' explanation, intimate teaching with his disciple. He arranged the materials according to the themes. Not so much of chronological order. In this text, we see about woman who pour out this very expensive oil on Jesus. The same story we can find in Mark and also John, and we see John chapter 12, we see about this story, exactly the same story, and this is what it says. It says, this took place six days before the Passover. Six days before the Passover. But verse 1 and 2 here in the Matthew passage, Jesus was saying, we have two days until Passover. So the woman's story happened even before the Jesus' triumphal entry to Jerusalem. But Matthew is putting them together here, rearranged, intentionally rearranged the material because he wanted to communicate something to us by putting these people together, chief priests, the woman, and Judas Iscariot. There's something we need to learn from this. There's a reason why Matthew put them together in this way. So, let's look into them one by one. First, going back again, the chief priests and the elders, verse 3 to 5. Some of the leaders that got together and they secretly plot against Jesus around this leadership, um, like a presidential figure of that time, the high priest of the year, his name is Caiaphas. Around him, there are plenty. Now, all the leaders were there. Some of the leaders were there. And this was actually fulfilling the Psalm chapter 2, verse 2. If you look into Psalm 2, verse 2, it says, The rulers, the leaders, gather together. They take counsel together against the Lord, Yahweh, and against his anointed. That's what it says. Anointed. In Hebrew, 
This is how you say that. Messiah. In Greek, this is how you say this. Christos. So, Psalm 2 verse 2, it says, they are planning against the Lord and His Christ. Christ. Probably they are not aware that they are fulfilling the prophecy, but this is what they are doing. And verse 4 of Psalm chapter 2, it says, the Lord, the one who sits on the throne sees it and he laughs. <laughs> he laughs. Sorry, I uh, laugh hysterically, but that's not how he got left. He laughs. He sees, and what can be hidden from the eyes of God? They were using God-given brain, God-given mind to use against God. And his Messiah. Thinking that, you know what? Let's arrest him and let's kill him and we got to do this fast. Quietly, because festival, Passover is coming. And it's a big festival, as you know, guys. And all these people will come to Jerusalem from all over the place. And, it, you know, Jesus is very popular by these crowds. If we do that by then, there could be a riot against us. So before the Passover comes, we got to arrest him, really quest, fast, quick, suddenly, at nighttime. That's our plan. We can do this. We got this. The Lord laughs. Brothers, sisters, these people, they were able to do so not because he did not see this coming, but because this was his plan. Acts 2 verse 23 says this. This Jesus delivered up according to According to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. Definite plan and foreknowledge of God. God has a plan, immovable, unshakable, definite plan. And he sees, he knows it all, foreknowledge between the Father and the Son. There was an eternal covenant between the Father and the Son. There was an eternal plan that God the Father is His will to give His one and only Son for His own. Those who have fallen, sin, deserving death and wrath of God, that His will is to give His Son as a sinless Savior to die on the cross in that way. And it was the will of the Son. They, Father, I will do it. I will obey you, Father. And God's Father said, I give those people as yours, as His. And the Son, that's the plan. Covenant between Father and Son. That Jesus may die on the cross instead of sinners. That those who trust and believe and repent may be forgiven. These people, completely being unaware of that, driven by their wickedness, driven by their jealousy, driven by their hatred and love of their power, controlling their religious system and abusing people. They just, I just want to protect this leadership and Jesus is speaking against us, what we are doing wrong, how we are doing wrong, and let's just kill him. In their sinfulness, they are doing this. Brothers, sisters, you hear me? These people were fulfilling the pro prophecy not in a way it was forced upon them, but they're just doing this following their sinful desire. This was their plan. This was their idea. This was their desire. But at the same time, their wicked plan and desire by no means frustrate God's plan. By no means hurt God. Or his anointed. It was also a part of God's bigger plan. And God will turn this around for good.
by raising Jesus from the dead to save all his people, you and me, brothers, sisters, those who trust and believe in him. Second person, verse 6 through 13, this woman, Mary. Verse 7, let's look at verse 7. A woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive, expensive ointment, oil. And she poured it on his head as he reclined a table. So this woman came and poured this very expensive oil on Jesus' head. And imagine that oil dropping from his head to his face, to his body, and all the way to the ground, feet to the ground. According to John 12, and she was wiping Jesus' feet with her hair. Some of the disciples saw this and they were indignant about this. Because in their eyes, this was a waste. The oil, this is expensive. Just, just going in the ground and we cannot pick it up, we cannot use it again. It's, it's a waste. It's a waste. And they said, it should have been sold for a large sum of money and we can do it. We can help the poor. Uh, this kind of aromatic ointment was very expensive and precious in the ancient world. Actually, Mark 14 tells us that this ointment was about 300 denarii worth at that time. 300 denarii, how much is that worth in our modern day? At this time, it was about one year wage of salary for an average laborer. So I don't know how much you make. The total annual salary, how much you can make from one year, she's pouring out on Jesus. One year of wage. Hmm. Can anybody do that? Can you imagine doing that? Your one year of work Jesus did not see this as a waste. Hmm. While some of them were indignant. Not because they truly care about the poor, which I will talk about it soon, a little bit later. But let's just say, even if they really care about the poor, listen to what Jesus was saying here. And Jesus saying, you will have a plenty of opportunity to help the poor because poor will be around you all the time. But not me. I will not be around you. You won't have much time with me to express your love and devotion to me. Were you listening to me, guys? I said, in two days, I'm going to die. In two days, I'll be crucified. He just talked about his coming death, and no one cared about his death. Let's just say, guys, my brothers and sisters, Put it this way, your parents is going to die in two weeks, in two days. Doctor said, your mom, she has two days. And your mom wants to, I want to visit, I don't know, see this beautiful Hawaii, New York, wherever. You know, like, aren't you willing to spend, if it costs a lot of money, aren't you willing to do that for her? Or your mom or your dad or someone precious to you? And would you say, that's a waste. I will not spend that much money. And just like, you will not have much time with me. As I said this before, um, the same story can be found in John chapter 12. And John 12 gives us the identity of this woman. She is Mary, a sister of Martha and sister of Lazarus, whom Jesus raised from the dead. This is the woman who loved to sit at the feet of Jesus Christ and to listen to this Jesus, 
when her sister Martha was anxious about many things, so busy with preparing and serving for many different parts of the ministry, yet Mary was just sitting there at the feet of Jesus for the love to listen to Jesus, and Martha complained unto Jesus, Jesus, can you, can you say something to Mary and rebuke her? See how busy I am. Let her help me. And Jesus said, like, Martha, Martha, you are anxious about many things. But one thing is necessary. You're always anxious about, what about this, what about that? But one thing is necessary. Sitting here and listening to me. And she chose a better portion. And it will not be taken away from her. Yes, there are many things that are important. But one thing that is most important, one thing is necessary, she chose that. She loved to listen to Jesus. To her, Jesus is the one who changed her life. To her, Jesus is the one who brought his dead brother back to life again. I don't know how much she understood about the death of coming death of Jesus Christ. Maybe she did. Better than those male disciples. Because she maybe paid better attention to Jesus' teaching than them. Maybe she didn't. Maybe she didn't have the or better understanding of the coming sacrificial death of Jesus. And I think most likely she did this just simply out of her devotion and love to Jesus. Not thinking, oh, Jesus' death is coming. Let me prepare him for his burial. Not thinking that. Just out of her devotion and love for Jesus. She poured her love and devotion in a radical way to her that was not a waste. One year of wage. For Jesus, she's like, my whole life is his. My whole life is his. What she did, she just saw it as beautiful. She poured out her life on Jesus. See, what that has done, uh, Jesus is pointing out that this is beautiful, her act, and her act is prophetic. She says, she's actually preparing me for my burial. No one has done this for Jesus. None of the disciples, even when Jesus talked about his death. Nobody. I believe most of you have been in funeral before. I don't know about our youth students, but as you get older, you will have a time to time that you need to attend funerals. We do. Um, in our culture, funeral, when somebody is passed away at a mortuary, they clean the body, they put beautiful clothes, nice clothes, and they even do some makeup and put it in the coffin and the people, sometimes people can see that too, right? That's what we do in our culture. In the ancient days, they also cleans the body and they put aromatic, fragrant oil on the person. All over. Rub. So that the body may smell good. They do this out of expression of their love and care for that one who passed away. This is why woman went to the Jesus' tomb early in the Easter Sunday morning. Because they wanted to do this. This is what they do in their culture, putting oil on the dead person. They couldn't do that when Jesus died because after Jesus died, it was the Sabbath day right away. Sabbath day, they were not supposed to do it. So they waited. As soon as the Sabbath day is over, as soon as the Sunday morning sun rises, they go to the tomb so that they can do this. That's why these women went to the tomb. Not because, you know what, Jesus is going to be risen today. No, they didn't see that. They just wanted to do this for Jesus. But when they got to the tomb, they weren't able to do it because he was risen already. This Mary was able to do it beforehand. 
foretelling before. That's what Jesus is saying. She did this burial process, me right now, which you wouldn't be able to do. She's doing it, preparing me. Who has done this? None of the male disciples. Even though Jesus talked about his death, they read her here saying, Why did you do this? It's a waste. What she did out of a love and devotion, radically and sacrificially, though she wasn't fully aware of the, what that means, the significance of that, but she was partaking the plan of God, preparing the Savior for his death. Look at the compliment that Jesus is giving to her. I've never heard anything like this. i never heard anything like this in the gospel. Jesus says, wherever... The gospel is proclaimed and preached. She will be preached. She will be remembered. That's what we are talking about her here today. In all generations, wherever, where the gospel of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, where church is built, she will be proclaimed and remembered. Hmm. This woman, her radical, costly, sacrificial act, pouring out her life and love for Jesus. And see how that prepared Jesus for his death in a way that no one else has done. Third, Judas is carried. See how Matthew put Judas next to this woman. That's pretty sad. It's just this woman and Judas Iscariot is next to each other. Matthew put it in that way. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver, do you want to know its worth at the time? It's the four months of the wage. And this woman poured one year of wage. Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. For the money of the four months of the wages. Do you know who was the disciple who got angry with this woman by pouring out the oil? Judas Iscariot. John 12. Let me show it to you. John 12, verse 3 to 6. Mary, therefore, took a pound of the expensive ointment made from the pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this. Not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having in charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. He got angry, not because he really cared about poor, but because he was a thief. He was a treasurer. He was in charge of money. The Jesus ministry money. And what he says, he just helped himself. So he was angry. You could have just sold that for 300 denarii and give it to us so we can help out the poor. And he was saying this today. What destroyed this man? The love of money. Which is the root of all evil. Maybe this man, Judas Iscariot, followed Jesus, hoping that, that Jesus may give him the ideal dream life that he wanted to live. When Jesus comes in power, become a king, that I may have riches, this fame, and also power, recognition from the other people that he is one of the disciples of this Jesus. Yes. But the repeated message of Jesus was death, death, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to be even crucified. Maybe he was disappointed. I did not sign up for this. 
Maybe he was even angry. Maybe that motivated him to betray me. Well, Jesus, you say you're going to die and die, die by the hands of the elders and leaders? Mine as well. If that's going to happen, I'd rather just get some money then. If that's what's going to happen, I'd just rather just get some money. The love of money, that was his master, not Jesus. This wasn't, are you with me, church? Hear me. This wasn't sudden one-time temptation thing that he just happened to be falling to it. No. This pattern of life, don't you see, was building up in his life. He was a thief. That's how he lived his life. Money, money, money. Betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver was done. Okay, I just, one day he just wakes up in the morning. I'll just do it. No, that was his life in him. It was built it up. That's who he is. That's how he lived his life. That's what he served throughout his life. Even though he physically followed Jesus, his master was always money, money, money through Jesus. His idol. How poor is this man? He witnessed the miracles of Jesus, feeding 5,000 people, walking on the water, calming the seas and the oceans, the dead person being raised, the demons being cast out. He sat there next to Jesus, heard all the teachings of Jesus, all the parables of Jesus. He intimately explained all the meanings of the kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. This man was indeed one of the twelve. He heard it all at a very close distance with this Jesus. In a way that no one else had that intimate experience. But all along, Jesus was not his Lord. Not his love. There are people like that. They have their dream life, their ideal life, and they come to church, they worship God, they serve God, so that maybe the God will give me the life that I want, the life I want to live in my life, the wealth, the secure job, the special someone in my life, ideal marriage, beautiful kids, good family, and good vacations, and decent house. And healthy life to the long age. They want to be Instagram star. And people look at me and my family. Oh, I want to live that kind of life. And if that doesn't happen, I'm still single. I am nobody. My marriage is so difficult. Always conflict is so hard. I am childless my, or my child is sick or I am sick all the time. I never get better or always struggling with finance, money, money, or I never can. I cannot even think about vacation. I'm so busy. I'm so tired. I'm so busy all the time. While all these people enjoying their lives, I look at Instagram, I look at Facebook, I get discouraged. I'm angry. And God, you are not giving me the ideal life that I want to live. And they just forget about it. Out of anger and bitterness, they walk away. The whole time they come into church, he was not their master. Brothers, sisters, Jesus Iscariot fulfilled the prophecy that the Messiah will be betrayed by one of his own. Not in a way something forced upon him. It's like, oh, I got to betray him. No. He did this completely out of his own sinful desire. I want money. I don't care. I want money. Willingly, he did this out of love of money. All these three without being fully aware of the significance of their acts. They fulfilled the will of God. They fulfilled the plan of God, which is the death of the Savior for our salvation. 
they all taking a step towards that. How do you? I'm done. How do you want to be a part of God's story? We are part of God's big story. All is leading to the consummation of his kingdom at his return. All your daily life, you don't see the significance of that. We may not see the significance of the hope of glory. What big is this? We are small. We are not even 100 people. But all in God's big plan and picture in God's story, we are all leading up to that, fulfilling his will, his plan, consummation of his kingdom. All his kingdom work. Who is Jesus to you in your daily life? Who is your master? The things we do, we are all serving his will this way or that way. God's plan will be fulfilled. And I pray of glory you all be a good part of building up His will. Let's pray.